as a black queer girl, I figured out a long time ago that falling apart is a privilege. And if I fall apart, then I won't be able to manage. I won't be able to um, survive. So if I keep it all together, if I just like keep going and I, My mom passed away when she was 38, and I was 28 when I found the lump. I would tell people, oh, my mom has breast cancer, and they would say, I don't believe you. She used to like sashay down the sidewalk like it was a runway. Like my mom was just super there. She never showed anybody that she was sick. She didn't talk about being sad about not having her nipple. She just was happy that the cancer was out of her body. Anytime I was in the shower, I would do a breast exam. And I told my wife at the time that I found a lump, and she was like, well, you must go to the doctor. A week or so later, he called me. I was standing on Wall Street. I was about to walk into a Sephora, actually, naturally. And I took the call in front of the Sephora and I had to like carry myself to benches to sit down because I was so terrified. My doctor said, you have bilateral breast cancer, come into the office um, so I could tell you next steps. And I made an appointment and then I continued to break down in the middle of Wall Street. And then for two years or so of treatment, I think I cried maybe once. When I was diagnosed and the doctor said, you're going to have to have a double mastectomy, I asked, am I going to go through chemo? Because I wanted to know if I'm going to have hair or not. I was more concerned about my hair when I was diagnosed than having a double mastectomy. Um, so I did what I called a boob party on the beach and just celebrated the breasts that had been on my chest for about 15 years, the day before my surgery. I cut my locks and I dyed my hair pink that same day. So when I walked into surgery, my breast cancer surgeon was like, so you're ready. <laughs> After you have a double mastectomy, if you want reconstructive surgery, they put in your chest something called tissue expanders. And they sit in your chest and they fill up once a month or so so they can expand the skin, so they can prepare it for whatever sort of reconstructive surgery they're gonna put in your body. They're super painful. Living in New York City, people move and they run around and they're always go, 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 go. And I love that. And I couldn't do it. Chemo forces you to lay down. And I couldn't like go hang out with my friends after work because I was so tired and fatigued. I couldn't have sex with my partner because I was tired or in pain. I gave up yoga. I was just surviving. I believe that my partner more in my breast more than I did. Our intimacy stopped. I was more focused on how can Erica stay here and be alive and flourish, not so much the aesthetic. And my plastic surgeon to this day will ask me if I want nipples. I don't want them. Not even tattooed, I don't want any of that. Because my scars run across the breast, so I just reclaimed these scars as my nipples. And I have phantom nipple sensation, so that's exciting. I've been going to Afropunk for as long as I've lived in New York City, so that's about six years. I was thinking, you know, I want to go topless at Afropunk. And I want to go topless because I want to raise awareness about breast cancer. There's not an image of a black breast cancer patient. So I was like, I'm going to go. There's lots of black queer people who go to Afropunk. Let me go and educate. When I got there, I was like, I'm not sure if I'm going to do it. I'm super nervous. Like, I'm freaking out. Like, I don't know what's going to happen. And then a guy walked past me with no top on. And I was like, I'm taking my top off. <laughs> why are his nipples not sexualized and mine are? I don't even have nipples. Like, why does it matter? Like, I'm tired of this. And I want people to check their breasts. So I'm like, I'm going to take this off and I want to be seen. I felt so attractive. I felt so sexy. And people took pictures of me and people came up to me and asked me, like, what happened to you? And that was super alarming to me. Like, how come you don't know what this looks like? And then I remember it, like, there is, we don't talk about it. There's no images of it. I love pushing up, like, this notion that I'm not supposed to be. I spent a lot of my life trying to fit into boxes and trying to be some way for other people. But that moment was a staple moment for me to just be like, I don't need to be anything for anybody but me. My name's Erica Hart, and I would like to dispel the myth that if you have scars as nipples, that means that you are not sexy.